welcome to the 27th episode of China Tools. My name is Dennis and I am from Hooked on Wood. And this is a very special episode. Not only because I'm very excited about the products I'm going to show you today, but mainly because this episode has subtitles. If you press the subtitle icon below, you can choose either English or Dutch subtitles. And then you can finally read that I call this series China Tools instead of uh, Genitals, which a lot of you seem to hear. It is a test, it costs some time, so please let me know if you found it a good addition. In my previous video, I showed you the different ways you can build a groove. And one of them was with this router template. And the starting point for me was to make a template as simple as possible. And I used 18mm wood that I had laying around. But there is a slight uh, edge because the rail was 90mm. So it is better to use 90mm thick wood. And for a narrow groove, this has no effect because the router is supported nicely by both edges. But viewers commented that if you have to make a wider groove, it creates an imbalance. And that's right. And uh, at the end of this video, I will show what a possible solution might be. Another frequently mentioned comment is that I use the round side of my router instead of the flat side. And the question was why? And there is a specific reason why I use the rounded side. And I will also cover this at the end of this video. Okay, in this video I want to show two products uh, that complete each other. And that is this dowling jig that allows you to make uh, different dowel joints and this multi-row puncher. We will start with this dowling jig. This dowling jig is a fantastic tool for well-fitted and precisely placed dowels. It allows you to make different dowel connections very quickly. And now there are several doweling jigs available uh, on the market today and this one is different in shape. So let's see how easy this one is and if it is a doweling jig to consider. Recently I wanted to make a drawer block for my new workbench and I decided to use uh, this device instead of my uh, domino. And I have to honestly admit that I was impressed with how easy, fast and accurate this worked. This doweling jig comes neatly packed and with uh, lots of parts and everything you might need is included. The base is very solid and well finished. It feels pretty heavy and the finish is perfect with no sharp edges. But also all bushings, screws and stop collars are of excellent quality. The supplied drill bits are very sharp, of high quality and perfectly balanced. And you notice this when you work with it. It gives a very stable impression. Overall, I'm very impressed with the quality of this product. But of course, this does not mean that it's also a nice product to work with. So let's see how it works. What stands out is that you can only use this doweling jig with 8mm dowels. With other doweling jigs, you often have multiple options in 6, 8 and 10mm. Furthermore, this doweling jig does not have an integrated clamp, but uses a universal external clamp. We start by measuring the thickness of a material, and in this case it is 23.6 mm. And the jig has many holes, and each hole number indicates the thickness of the material. So you screw the two plates together through the hole with a number closest to the thickness of the material, in our case 23.5. And this way we can uh, drill the holes almost in the center of the material. But because it's not a self-centering doubling jig, you need to account for a front and back side. And it is best to mark where the joints will meet, and this is the place where you will begin drilling. Every doubling jig is capable of joining two boards together, and so is this jig. And the system works very simple, and with a universal clamp. And as simple as this may seem, the jig clamps very stable against a piece of wood, allowing you to drill the holes very accurately. And you can drill three holes and then you need to move the dowel jig. And with an extension piece you can uh, determine a constant distance. And this extension piece is actually very simple, but it works very well. It has an extensive range and is very stable. And this makes it a very accurate device to work with. Where the doweling jig stands out from others is the ease with which you can connect a board at the edge. And this works practically the same, but now you put the doweling jig on the flat side against the edge of the piece of wood.
and you use the same extension piece which guarantees you will drill all the holes at the exact same place. The result is therefore perfect and this is without gluing, without clamping, without sanding, just a cold joint and it really looks awesome. Because of these four needles you can align this doubling jig perfectly and this works very quickly and very accurately. And then you put this included plastic pin in the center hole and with this you can perfectly align the doweling jig with the piece you want to connect. The result is a perfectly fitting and well aligned joint. The only disadvantage I have with this Dowling jig is that the alignment goes very well with an 80mm board, but when the board gets thicker, the alignment pin becomes higher, creating some play. Finally, it's also possible to make a corpus connection and screw the parts together. And also this way the result is perfect. Although this may look a bit complicated, it's not that difficult to do, but it does take a little more time. And this is mainly because you have to use three different size drills and you will also have to adjust them to the correct depth. But you will also have to change the drill during use. And if you want to save some time, a second drill will come handy for this. If you think my reviews are interesting, visit my website. Here you can find a ranking among all the products I tested in the last 26 episodes, including direct links to all the products. So visit www.hookedonwood.online. Overall a fantastic dowling jig and I'm very impressed with the device. Impressed by the high quality, impressed by the perfect results you can achieve with it, but especially impressed by the ease and speed with which you can adjust this jig. It's a very pleasant uh, device to work with. It's not a cheap dowling jig, but the level and finish and quality is excellent. And I had the opportunity to review many fine products in the past 26 episodes. But this is definitely one of my favorites. And this, this is my scoring card. The following product is actually uh, a product that acts as a complement to this doweling jig. As with this doweling jig, the quality and level of finish of this product is excellent. And they call it a multi-raw puncher and make using the doweling jig even faster and easier. And, and for those who will make more use of this doweling jig, it's a very valuable addition. It comes in particularly handy when you want to attach a board to a flat part. This punch is reasonably packed and consists of a flat tube with several holes. Uh, there are six 8mm bushings and three 10mm bushings. And the quality and level of finish is on par with the doweling jig. The jig has a dimension of 67 centimeters, making it uh, perfect to use when you want to make a cabinet that falls within this depth. And you can use these uh, bushings of the doubling jig to create nine bushings over the length of this jig. 
The alignment is even easier than with the dowling jig because there are eight needles with which you can align the jig. In addition, it has two pins at the head beginning which also align it nicely and straight. And the two pins also ensure that the first hole is aligned with the dowling jig. And after this, it's just a matter of clamping and drilling. And this works so straightforward that you can make a row of perfectly aligned holes within just 30 seconds. And if you compare this to just the use of the dowling jig, there is a big time saving here. In fact, I found it to be so fast that I was curious to see how this compares to a domino system. So that is why I introduced to you Festo Domino against Vimeo Dowling Jig. So just for fun, I made a comparison. And this is not a competition about the best system because a domino is incredibly fine, very flexible and without a doubt the better system. But the festival domino is also very expensive and also known for its speed of work. So this comparison is mainly to show you how fast you can work with this dowling jig in combination with the multi row puncher. Because in the end the differences is minimal. Which is why I am so enthusiastic about this dowling jig in combination with this puncher. But there's also another advantage. I previously told that with 23mm thick piece of wood, the alignment of the dowling jig becomes more unstable. And with this uh, multi row puncher, you do not have that problem. The 10mm bushings are needed to connect two pieces of wood using a corpus connection. And uh, the middle holes uh, are for the 10mm bushings. And again, this works a lot faster with the multi row puncher than just with the dowling jig. Finally, you can use uh, this jig to drill a series of holes to adjust uh, a shelf at different heights. Overall, the combination of dowling jig and this multi row puncher is just a very nice combination to work with. And I think you will use the combination easier and more often than when you only have the dowling jig. The time savings and convenience for this are just too significant. And this, this is my scoring card. My previous video was about five ways to mill a groove. And I also showed my adjustable template here. And because I use 80mm wood and the T-tracks are 90mm, there is a slight edge. And this is not a problem in making a narrow groove because the router base is supported on both sides. But as some of you pointed out, this can become a problem when you only have one side to support the router base. And the easiest solution would be to attach a piece of 90mm wood to your router. This gives more stability anyway and is what I prefer in such a situation. The other question is why do I use the round side of my router against uh, a guide? When using the flat side you need to push both sides against the guide with equal pressure. And at the same time we also need to make a forward movement. And in doing so, there is a chance that the front will come loose from the guide. In addition, it's also not a convenient position. If the front comes off the guide even slightly, you will see it immediately in your groove. 
when you use the round side, you only have one contact point. In fact, you now only have to push diagonally towards the guide to get both pressure and a forward movement. And because the side is round, it doesn't matter if you turn the router a little. It does not affect your groove. So actually, it's much easier, convenient and more accurate to use the round side. We have already come to the end of this episode. What a great product. I hope you found it interesting. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and we will see each other next time.